Welcome back to Skippers, presented by Owner's Box Fantasy Sports. Today's segment, top waiver wire targets for week nine in fantasy baseball. Avery Chenier, Andrew Boyer, Jeremy Roach, helping you navigate the wire. Jeremy, let's get into some opening notes from you. Subscribe to the channel. Like. The likes have been fantastic. We, we broke 100 twice now. So incredible. we have a new goal. What's the we new gotta goal? We got to beat. We didn't talk about this goal. 120 likes. So make sure you smash that like button. If we beat 120, We'll do another giveaway. <laughs> we'll do another giveaway. Yeah, that might need to be uh, proved by someone else, but, but we will give away something. We'll give away something. We'll Maybe give away something. Best here. Yeah, and don't forget to join our Discord and chat with us uh, all day about fantasy baseball. Yeah, love that. Boys are buzzing in there as always. All right, Jer, your first two guys. Probably my favorite guy, and he's a MLB favorite. And that's G Man Choi. Five uh, percent rostered. He came back from injury, and he's been great. Uh, I like G-Man Choi. I think that he's 30 years old. Um, we talk about the older guys having issues in 2020. He had an issue in 2020. He only had a 4% barrel rate. He was 11% in 2018 and 2019. Uh, he's riding a 14% barrel percentage right now. Uh, always been a good on-base guy, so OPP, I like him. I think that he's a solid pickup, and he's riding a hot wave right now. He's hitting three in that raise lineup. Uh, G-Man Choi is my waiver wire ad. I added him personally, so this isn't just me saying G-Man Choi because I like the name. We usually pick up guys that we say. Yeah, usually, yeah, we pick them up. Um, But this is a guy that I picked up. Uh, He's been great, so G-Man Choi. I have nothing to say about that. If your league does walks or on-base percentage, he's an elite asset for sure as well. And RBI opportunities, some power. First base has been rather thin again Mm -hmm. this year from the top, so not a bad guy to pick up if you need that help. Yeah, and my second guy, I am going newly named closer of the Detroit Tigers. That's Michael Fulmer. Uh, 28% roster, so a little higher. But, I mean, he's been a new man this year, usually a starter. They put him in the bullpen. He's riding a 22.3K percentage, his best K percentage, and his best barrel percentage against. So velocity's way up. It's close to three miles per hour up. So Michael Fulmer... Detroit isn't a great team, obviously, but, I mean, he's been great on the mound. So any opportunity there is saves, he's going to get it. So he's good for ratios, and he can get you some saves. We talked about – he's been recently, probably like three, four weeks ago, he was in one of these videos. I forget what it was. But that was as him as a starter. He started yeah. having good starts. Now you just throw him in the back end of the pen. That Vila will still play anywhere. Gregory Soto was terrible as our closer yeah, start. for sure. So not a bad guy to have. Hopefully, the only thing you worry about is the Tigers being bad, that he's not going to get save opportunities. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. He's had three saves recently, hasn't he? I think something like that. Yes. He's getting the yeah. opportunities. They're going through the Tigers. They're playing scrappy. So not a bad guy to have. Drew, you want to get into your guys? Uh, one more note on Fulmer. That's a great pitcher and the right role for him mm-hmm. to succeed. Um, my first guy is Bobby Dalbeck of the Boston Red Sox. So the first note is anyone getting at-bats in the Boston Red Sox lineup is a guy you want to have, most likely. But Bobby Dalbeck is a raw source of power. Um, over the last two weeks, we got four home runs, 16 RBI, and batting 287. Um, that'll play in any league. Uh, 92nd percentile barrel percentage and 81st percentile hard hit. So like I said, raw power. And while he's on this hot streak, you don't want to pick him up because home runs are a four-category event for Roto. Yeah, I mean, Bobby Dalbeck from Arizona, big body, a little more of an advanced hitter, so striking out was always an issue. But And him hitting at the bottom of the lineup, it was kind of weird. Yeah, he still he, is. Which he is, still is, yeah. But he's starting to perform down there, yeah. so bound to move him up at some point. Not a bad pick to Bobby Dalbeck. Yeah, I, I, I personally hate Bobby Dalbeck for personal reasons. What? You don't have <laughs> What's it. the reason? Let's see the story. Because I drafted him, and he was terrible to start the year. And that's so. why you stink sometimes, you know? Well, you no, I dropped him. I dropped him. How do you feel now that you dropped him? I don't want to see his face. <laughs> I drafted him as well. I really thought it was a mm-hmm. 45 home run upside kind yeah. of guy. Hey, we can get we can get 35 from Bobby Delbeck still this year. Yeah, we can. Let's see it. All right. Your second guy. My then. second guy. Uh, Harrison Bader of the St. Louis Cardinals, outfielder. Uh, rostered in about 26% of leagues. Um, he's consistently hitting in this Cards lineup, but it's near the end of the lineup. But uh, this is a guy that can get you stolen bases. So if you need stolen bases, Harrison Bader is someone to pick up. Um, he's only got three stolen bases on the year so far, but he does have 97th percentile sprint speed. And then also he's a guy that likes to walk and not strike out. So his uh, 92nd percentile outs above average, uh, nine walks, nine strikeouts. Um, he gets on base at a high high rate. And also an uh, interesting stat from StatCast is 81st percentile exit velocity. So while there is speed, there's also the potential for power, so you don't have to sacrifice uh, 
in that home run category to get those steals from Harrison Bader. There is a story I have about Harrison Bader. I was reading, scrolling through the internet like I like to do. Some guy said he was selling baseball cards. He's selling some type of cards to some random guy, and he met up, and he was like, oh, like I realized it's Harrison Bader. He was buying these cards from this guy. Harrison Bader claimed he had something wrong, like some disease in his eyes, where when he was up to bat, his eyes would water, so he mm-hmm. could, had a tough time seeing, and now it's gone. They fixed it. So he's going to hit better. All because of his eyes are fixed now. I mean, Sounds like Tommy Pham. Tommy Pham. I asked you as well, and they fixed it, and he was like almost an all-star that year. It's bound to happen then. Tommy Pham also getting stabbed at a strip club. Classic story. But Classic. <laughs> some people don't want to talk about that. I like talking about it, but those are good picks there. Drew, I'll get into my first guy, Alec Manoa of the Blue Jays, 15% rostered. He's not on the Blue Jays yet. So far, in his three AAA starts, 3-0, 27 strikeouts, 18 innings pitch. One earned run, three walks, 056 whip. These are impressive numbers for a guy in AAA already. Nine professional starts only. Mm-hmm. He was West Virginia's Friday night guy. He was going deep into games in college. He's just a power arm, great stuff. His slider's incredible. We saw the uh, Jeter Downs videos of he couldn't even come close to touching Alec Manoa's sliders. It was pretty crazy. But if you look at this, you're like, oh, I don't know how he's going to do against major league talent. If you look at his uh, at spring, it was super impressive. Seven innings. One hit, no walks, 15 strikeouts. And Fangraphs uh, has a metric where it tells you quality of opponent. And for spring training, it's usually, you think it's low. You think you're facing nobodies. Scott White said, this is, I got this part from him. He said, oh, there's players with number 80 on that team. But no, he was facing guys, it's a number out of 10. And usually his uh, stats against were eight to nine for his appearances. So he's facing big league talent in spring already. And with those type of numbers, it's incredible. Also, he's lined up with Ross Stripling's turn in the rotation, a guy who's really struggled with the Blue Jays. So if he's going to get called up, it's probably going to be for Ross Stripling's spot in the rotation. So I think that's why they have it lined up. He's the most stashable minor league pitcher now that Logan Gilbert's up. So I think that's a guy you need to get on now if you need some pitching help. I I don't think they're going to call him up next week. I don't think they are. I think that... we. Well, how I don't do I, know. The Jays okay. aren't... The Jays usually don't call up their prospects early. And two, look what's happened with the pitchers who have been called up early. Pearson. Pearson, Gobert, and Lynch. Yeah. All done pretty bad. So I think they're looking at that situation. And this guy, he's only had, like, I think it was nine professional starts. So yeah, even I said, less. I said that. I don't think he's. I don't think they're. I. I would be shocked if the Jays were just like, yeah, you can come up and pitch. And I don't think he'll come up. This is that's why he's stashable. I said he's not a yeah, guy that yeah. long bench and you have room to not drop someone you need to actually start and just mm-hmm. wait for him to get called up. Yeah, I. Th- I mean, I think by June he'll be, get called up. If Ross Stripling keeps pitching like. We know Ross Stripling. He's pitches. a reliever. Yeah, yeah, like he's not good. Alec Manoa is better than Ross Stripling is already. Yeah. And the Jays are in contention. They need the talent in the in the lineup and not down in AAA. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, but I think that they're going to rely on Pearson more. They have to. Okay, Nate Pearson's been hurt. No, but I mean, like, Nate Pearson is still going to – He's need back more, pitching in AAA. They need more help than just one pitcher right now, mm-hmm. I know they need help, but not for, – forcing, isn't a, forcing a rookie coming up isn't going to help the situation. I, this, isn't a, this isn't forcing him up. But no, well, looks like he has the confidence to handle the MLB, too. He's it's got the tough. it factor. It's it's tough. Tough. If he's coming up, he's got to stay in the rotation. There's none of this bullshit where he comes <laughs> goes up back two down. starts, and then they brought him down, which okay. is probably going to happen with Lynch. Over, time. under on him coming up next week for Stripling's yep. uh, start. I would say it's – a 15% chance he comes up. All right. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's a huge chance, but I see him within the next month being up. And that's, we stash Logan Gilbert mm-hmm. for how long? I know, but now I'm worried. Okay. That's why you're, you, you now need to stop worrying. Yeah, <laughs> you, I'm a warrior. It's been six innings pitched. He didn't throw his change up once yet. He's going to be okay. This isn't a Blue Jays pod. I know. We'll get, maybe we'll get a Blue Jays pod going. But, but <laughs> that's why we're going to argue on that yeah. the most. I'll get into my second guy, William Contreras of the Atlanta Braves. 18% rostered, must-add player in two catcher leagues. He is making his way mm-hmm. to a must-add in one catcher leagues as well. Slashing 255, 364, 574 with four homers, 17 RBIs in only 15 games. Running away with the starting catcher job in Atlanta now that Travis Darno is out. Pretty much anyone needs help at catcher in your leagues. This is a guy with an easy source of power early in his career. You have to be excited about William Contreras. Easy path to playing time right now for a couple months. Why not take a shot on a guy like this? It's a great situation because he has the talent, and then that lineup is amazing too. Yeah. So opportunity and talent, and that's the fantasy equation. He right? should be at least fifty percent rostered, I think. Yeah. But yeah. He's been he's been good. I mean, catcher position is always. When risky. are we expecting Drno back? 
I think it was a couple month thing. I forget. Yeah, he was like. terrible even before uh, yeah. his injury. But I mean, he looks exactly like his brother. That's something we gotta talk about. They're identical. Bro- they're brothers. You, I know, but you it's look, crazy. You look pretty much just like your brothers too. No, it is crazy. <laughs> but anyway, like a simple <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. or what? I find it's wild. But <laughs> that, you think it's wild that brothers look the no, same? No, they're like twins, dude. They're literally like twins. <laughs> we'll clip this up and put both of them on the screen to you, see. You think they're going to want to clip that up? I'll clip it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any more notes from anyone here? No. no. Make sure you stop. We want to hear below about your waiver wire. Yeah, comment below about Alec Manoa, too. Who Over you, 120. Who do you think's right? Me or Jer? Yeah, Hopefully Alec Manoa. We'll put a poll in the community, so make sure you... Uh, and if not, we're going to have a boxing match because we're yeah. going to get mad. For charity. Yeah, for charity. For charity. Yeah. We're all the charity. Yeah, all the charity. All right. Thank you everyone for tuning in, and we will see you next time.